road to the Final Four. We join you this afternoon from Tampa, Florida, and action from the Southeast region, the 2011 NCAA Tournament. The number seven seed, UCLA, matched up with the number two seed in the Southeast, the Florida Gators. Winner here will advance to New Orleans and await the survivor of the Gonzaga-BYU game coming up later tonight from Denver. And welcome courtside, everybody. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. David Aldridge will join us as well. These two teams moved on to this round in very different ways. Florida with a blowout win over UC Santa Barbara. UCLA had to sweat it out against Michigan State. Let's start with the Gators, though. They looked like a number two seed. Chandler Parsons, he was the SEC Player of the Year, and he played like it. Yeah, he did, and as a team, they looked very comfortable in their offensive sets in particular. Things were going well. Guys were spotting up. When Parsons had the basketball, things were happening, whether it was he was driving to the basket or, more importantly, setting up his teammates. I thought he did a fabulous job with those 10 assists, making life very easy for the Gators in terms of getting their sets and their confidence to level up. Let's see if he can perform up to that level again this afternoon. It looked like life was going to be very easy for UCLA in the second round. They had a 23-point lead against Michigan State. The Spartans come rallying back. UCLA turnovers, missed free throws. They get the win, so they're here. The question is, how do they handle Florida? They might have a difference maker, though, in Joshua Smith. He's been an X Factor for Ben Howland. And Ben Howland will love to establish him on the blocks. He's big. He's 300 pounds. But don't forget, he's very good in terms of putting the ball in the basket with his hands and his footwork in particular. A big guy, so he has to get down deep defensively and make things happen. The one thing to watch out for him, though, is watch to see if Florida gets him moving around defensively and maybe get him to get in some foul trouble. Early. It is just the third all-time meeting between Florida and UCLA. Winner goes to the Sweet 16. We'll come back starting lineups and opening tip from Tampa. March Madness is here on CBS. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by UPS. Burger King and by Southwest Airlines UCLA the number seven seed in the southeast Ben Hallam led the Bruins to three straight final four appearances from 06 to 08 last year clearly a rebuilding year when they went 14 and 18 they're back in the NCAA tournament and trying to make a deep run Starting five for UCLA, Lazarek Jones, Malcolm Lee, Joshua Smith, the freshman, Tyler Honeycutt, and Reeves Nelson. For Florida, SEC regular season champions, backcourt duel of Irving Walker and Kenny Boynton, Vernon Macklin in the middle, Chandler Parsons, the multifaceted small forward for Florida, and Alex Tyus, the senior up front. For Billy Donovan's team, back-to-back -back national championships, and this group, it took a little time for them to mesh together and grow, and here they are as a number two seed in the Southeast region. This game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Officials Pat Driscoll, Mike Nance, Michael Irving, and UCLA controls the tip we're underway here in Tampa. One of the key things for UCLA is to try to get the post established with Smith. And he's going to try his best to use that body to position himself for the catches and fan participation to start things off for Honeycutt's errant pass. So turnover to open play for UCLA. It was a 78 to 76 win over Michigan State, but they were outscored 52 to 36 in the second half on Thursday night. Boynton working around the perimeter for Walker. Parsons the drive and kick. Horton. Parsons, one dribble and a jumper. Knocks it down. Smooth the last time out. Smooth again this afternoon. And right now it allows Florida to pick up. They want to up-tempo, force some turnovers if they can. Make UCLA make some decisions on the fly. They handle the pressure. Reeves Nelson. It's going the other way. Contact with Macklin, who took the hit. Good move there by Nelson. I'm not so sure there was a little bit of a slide underneath here on the first glance. I think that's a moving screen right there. Block in terms of not positioning yourself quick enough. 
I think you have to give the offensive guy some room to make his move, especially when, it, when he's into it. Two possessions, two turnovers for UCLA and a 2-0 Florida lead. Just over a minute gone by, first half. Boynton feeds it down low. Tyus, the curl, left hand, no good. Watch the Boynton and Lee matchup. Defensively, Lee is as good as they come in the country at his position. What a job he did against Kalen wow. Lucas the other night against Michigan State. Lee on the dribble breakdown. And out of bounds, yes. Joshua Smith stepped on the baseline. Lee with that little drift to the basket just couldn't get his footing correct to get a better explosion to the basket. So, so far UCLA just feeling it out a bit. They did get to the free throw line frequently against Michigan State. 47 attempts. They missed a bunch of them down the stretch. They finished 30 of 47 and they had 16 turnovers in the win over the Spartans. Parsons directing traffic. Walker breaks free. Nice little fake on Jones and a bounce for Macklin. Kneeling and yep. Smith denies him. Yep. It's ball. a tie up. Yep. Florida has possession. My old instincts going there with the jump ball, huh? Yeah. Yeah, a little tie up. Here is the hand coming across. Well done by Smith. He just has to be careful, I think, in the first five or six minutes of this game. They're going to challenge him, make sure that he just stays away from the needless foul. Boynton the pull up pop. Book it. Boy, how's the elevation there, huh? One good bounce at the end to get himself elevated to shoot over people. Aggressive, confident sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida. 4 nothing. Gators. Half court set here for UCLA. Lee led the way against Michigan State with 16. Honeycutt had 16 as well. And Smith finished with 14. Yep, 2 3 look right now. Here's Nelson. He had 12 points and 10 rebounds in the win the other night. Shot clock is down to five. Get it in for Smith. Turns, fires, and connects. Billy Donovan said it's like guarding a freight train. Joshua Smith. And foul is called. It's Boynton creating on the perimeter. And he got it the ball down the right side of the floor so quickly. But watch the footwork. And then the extension with the one hand drifting through the middle of the floor. But very soft hands for a big guy. Lazara Jones called on the foul for UCLA. Kenny Boynton to the free throw line. He finished with 13 points in the 79-51 round of UC Santa Barbara in the second round. Florida making its 16th NCAA tournament appearance. Finished the year strong. Now 11-2 in their last 13 games heading into this one. You got off to that 43 to 19 start in the first half. So clearly these guys, the Gators should be pretty well rested in comparison to UCLA after their game with Michigan State. Florida six, UCLA two, early stages first half. Jones gives up his dribble, Nelson way outside against the zone. Almost like they don't know what to do against it at this point. Jones a three, rimming, no. Oh, big guy. Smith lays it in. He's got great <laughs> hands on the interior and a soft touch. You used that word mountain before? I use freight train. <laughs> I'll I think, use mountain. I think you fought mountain. <laughs> Pointing on a bounce inside. Tyus bumping bodies with Nelson, and he gets it to drop with the offhand. You know, one of the things is... If, Florida will look to push this game, and that's one of the things that Ben Howland had mentioned to us in terms of transition defense. Very, very important this weekend for him to make sure his guys get back in a hurry. Howland said Smith is a special player, and he's just scratching the surface, but he's really come on in his freshman year. Smith, and that is a tie-up. Possession arrow belongs to UCLA with 16-21 to play in this first half. Well, you take a look down deep. Here's Smith, and let's see him do his work. Starts to come across. Nobody even close to blocking him out. Parsons on the one side, but not a factor defensively. Jones is forced to the UCLA bench, maybe having some trouble with his eye. And Jeremy Anderson checks in. Tip in, goes down for Smith. He just planted himself underneath, and Florida could not contain him. That's going to be an issue here today. Parsons stop and go, and the razzle-dazzle intercepted. Give it up, good luck. There's another good luck, uh, just a little behind. And knocked out of bounds by Macklin, as Lee was trying to get it to Reeves Nelson on the cut. We'll get our first time out with 15.53 to go. 
in the first half. You can't move him. You can't move him. Great position again. Florida, 27-7 this season. We mentioned the growing pains for this particular group of Gators. Let's check in with more on that story with David Aldridge. Well, I and Billy Donovan told me yesterday this may be one of his most rewarding coaching jobs of his career, considering that this group of seniors, which is Chandler Parsons, Alex Tyus, and Vernon Macklin, were among the players that Donovan basically threw off of campus two years ago. You may recall that that group started 18-3, but failed to make the NCAAs. And Donovan not only would not let them practice in Gainesville, he would not even let them wear warm-up gear that had Gators on it. Donovan said yesterday, I wanted them to understand that the reason wasn't that we didn't make the tournament, it was that we didn't work hard, we didn't practice hard, and we didn't know what it took to compete. They've learned the lesson, I'd say. I am. Uh, no doubt. And, D.A., keep in mind, these seniors, Macklin not included because he was at Georgetown, but these seniors, they were the first class after the back-to-back -back championship. Correct. So the expectations around Gainesville and around the country were still very high. Yeah, and sometimes you forget as Nelson cuts to the middle of the basket. How about Smith with that delivery? When you look at it, though, Ian, there was a little, I don't know if the word complacency is right, but the expectation was, well, you know what? We did it two in, two in a row, and we may not have to work that hard to get another. Yeah, just reload. Yeah. There's Macklin on a kick out for Parsons. We're tied at eight. Tyus back in on Nelson. Again, left hand doesn't get the roll. And rebound ripped down by Nelson for UCLA. Always around the basketball, Nelson, for UCLA, whether it's offensive glass, and he likes the bounce and bang. So watch him on the offensive glass when that ball's loose. UCLA making its 44th appearance in the NCAA tournament. Crossover Lee on Parsons, zigzagging, 15 to shoot. Hard to shake Parsons just then, and Parsons has the length also. Six foot, 10 inch, small forward. He plays like a guard. Shot clock is down to five. Honeycutt, little bump from Horton, and the scoop to the hoop goes. Tyler Honeycutt, first team, all pack 10. Comes in averaging just under 13 points per game. UCLA on a 6-0 run. Smart move, too, with that extra dribble just then. It created the extra space. Walker, a three. Irving Walker will shoot it from anywhere. Four of six in the first round game. And boy, was he really spotting up nicely the other, the other game that they played. Because what happens with him is he reads defense as well. And he reads his offensive teammates just as well also to know where he's going to get the shot in anticipation. He was the high man with 18 points in the win over the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara. 11-10, Florida leads it. Six minutes gone by, first half. Nelson, the hard drive, and he's fouled by Tyus. Watch this extra dribble right there. And if that gets him a little bit of space, a little bit of a flip, too, going to the hoop. And Walker over the screen. If you're just a split second late, it's too late. And he's going to drain a lot. He's, he's very confident right now in the way he's shooting the basketball in this backcourt. But Florida is playing as well over the last, you know, three, four, five games as they have all season. Irving Walker sits. Kenny Horton is charged with that foul. Macklin and Tyus join Walker on the sideline. And major changes here for Billy Donovan with Eric Murphy coming on. Scotty Wilberkin will see his first action along with another freshman, Patrick Young. Just about everybody against UC Santa Barbara who played for the Gators played well. But keep in mind, that game was over relatively early, and it's easier to play without the pressure of a game like this. So it'll be interesting to see what they get out of the bench. Parsons flicks it over for Borton. That's a three way off. Yeah, they don't need that one that far and that quick. Anthony Stover in the game for UCLA, replacing Joshua Smith. Bruins lead by one. The drive, Anderson switching hands. Oh, the neck ball. <laughs> Every time that happens, I love that play. You get excited. I love the neck ball. You believe it's the most exciting play in basketball, don't you? <laughs> Close to it. <laughs> it did freeze everybody for a second. Well, Florida takes over. And the possession now will switch off now to UCLA. 12-11 Bruins on an entry. Parson, nice spin-off. But the foul was called on the floor before the release. Start a new bracket with round by round for every correct pick. Infinity will make a donation to fight cancer up to $500,000. Find out more at cbssports.com slash infinity. Honeycutt called on the personal foul for UCLA. Get it in. Parsons 
the deuce on the inside off the entry. Parsons just looks like a guy who two things. Ian is having fun playing basketball, and the reason his confidence level is, is so high right now, and he's playing well. It's a great package. And a guy that might go surfing after the game as well with a mop top. <laughs> Honey cut. A triple for UCLA. Fifth lead change in this first half. 15-13, Bruins. Parsons swings it out for Murphy. Now it's Borton. Murphy's got range. He's a big man at 6'10". And nice touch as he gets the roll. Eric Murphy, the sophomore from South Kingston, Rhode Island. Seven points against UC Santa Barbara, and he was confident shooting the basketball also. So another big coming off the bench who can give them a little punch. And both teams shooting it well. UCLA is 6 of 10. Florida, 6 of 9. Against the zone here, yep. UCLA. 2-3 look. And Parsons is going to extend to see if there's a shooter on the wing on the right side of the floor. The UCLA team led the Pac-10 in turnovers this season. A back in. Nelson, tough shot. And he delivers. Tough is the word for him. He's very, very difficult to guard because he's willing to put the body at people and make things happen. Not afraid to mix it up at all. Murphy, a three. Rebounded by Honeycutt. That's the type of shot he hit in the first round. Good looking stroke there. Nice move by Jones. Running defenders, Jones draws the foul. Murphy was the last line of defense. And Jones is going to shoot a pair for UCLA after the break. Murphy picks up his first personal. UCLA up two on Florida from the Southeast region in Tampa. Support disaster relief efforts to help those affected by the Japan earthquake and Pacific tsunami. Text Red Cross to 90999 to give $10. CBS cares. First half action here in Tampa, 17-15 UCLA leading Florida. John Calipari has already moved on. That's his son on the right, posing for some photos. And a sigh of relief as well for the Kentucky Wildcats after West Virginia took that lead at halftime. And then Kentucky came storming back in the second half. Lazaric Jones at the free throw line, 80% shooter. Junior college transfer, John Logan College in Carterville, Illinois. Won a state title and a city title in Chicago, Simeon High School. And teammates with Chicago Bulls superstar Derek Rose, who played for Calipari at Memphis. Mm -hmm. Not a bad player in his own right, huh? Probably going to win the MVP award, Jimmy. <laughs> he might just do that. 19-15 UCLA. Florida has just one rebound so far. And a turnover as Wilbekin was trying to get it inside for Macklin. Well, UCLA is, is pretty tough inside, and Billy Donovan understands that because posting up is going to be a problem. He wants to try to get it on the blocks. Don't be afraid to kick it back out to your shooters because I'm sure UCLA, if there are some easy touches for Florida on the blocks, will try to double-team that to force it out. Brendan Lane in the game for UCLA. He gave Ben Howland quality minutes in the win over Michigan State. They swing it over. Lane, Look rainbow Smith. delivery, no. Smith in there, and a block for Young. Patrick Young is well put together as well. Yeah, doesn't have the weight, but he has the strength. Although Smith had terrific position again on the offensive glass. Young, 6'9", 245 pounds. Smith is listed at 6'10", 305. Inside, Smith stepping in for the steal and a foul call. Every so often you see Smith do something that just really baffles you, thinking that he's 300 pounds or so. Watch the footwork. He gets his feet moving a little bit and then gets on the floor. He took a big hit the other night, hitting the floor too with his elbow. And right there again. That time on the left side of his body. The other last game was at the right side of his body. UCLA with a 19-15 lead. Tyler Lamb in the game. Kick out. Jones lines it up and rims out on a three. Here's Walker using the high screen. Young got Jones on the pick. He sure did. A nice job setting that pick. Directing traffic. Walker. 
pull up three. Doesn't go. A foul call. Jones tried to work around the screen. And Irving Walker is going to get three free throws for Florida. Jones collared with his second foul. And Jones, that trip, was trying his best not only to get around the screen, but I think to avoid the foul there. He puts his hand up, and at the very last minute, you see Walker just falling enough. A little bit of a touch. He didn't get hit that hard the way he fell down. But a little bit of acting on the jump shot never hurts. Five foot eight, 171 pounds. Walker missing on the first attempt. A fearless point guard. Junior has been doubted through the years because of his size. Plays a lot of minutes for Billy Donovan. Second team all SEC. Uh, size wise he has the number one point guard sizing but he plays like a two guard also he's that combination of a guy who can handle it and shoot and look to score yeah, Billy Donovan talked about the relationship that Walker and Boynton have now forged over the last year they've become a lot closer and he said now they're connected at the hip and they feed off one another out on the floor oh it's just so important to have that chemistry as the backcourt and really and then if you throw Parsons into the mix it's a real nice mix in terms of being able to rely on one another and have the confidence that three guys can handle the ball and deliver it. After 14 years, I'd like to see you and I maybe develop some chemistry at some point, Jimmy. Well, work on that. Maybe we'll get 14 more years of doing this. Nelson, the leaner, and a blocking foul call. Macklin trying to slip in. He got the benefit of the call earlier. He didn't get it this time. It's Nelson's ability to drive to the basket, though, fearlessly, that gets him to the line. And Nelson, a 61% shooter. First team all Pac-10, Modesto, California, out of Modesto Christian. UCLA up by two. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, Scott Kelly's report from the Tsunami Zone and a look inside the American team working to avert nuclear disaster in Japan. That's tomorrow, only CBS. <laughs> UCLA now 7 of 14 from the field, 6 of 6 from the free throw line. And they have a 21 to 17 lead. Nelson off to the quick start. He's got eight points. We are just past the midway point of this first half. Parsons outside Boynton. Lee has jumped over to Parsons now defensively. Back in. And Macklin attacking at the chest of Smith. And a foul call. That's what happens sometimes with the big guys. You want to make sure you get them moving and do it the way you think you can do it in terms of getting some position. So you put the ball on the floor strongly to get two steps going to the middle. That forces Smith, who had a, actually a late start mm. moving just then. It was an easy call from the official. Get it in for Parsons, and he drains it. A long two-pointer for Castleberry, Florida native Chandler Parsons. He's got six on three of three from the field. We'll talk about Lucas from Michigan State the other night, guarded by Lee. Parsons got that shot off. I think Lucas would have loved to have gotten a couple of free looks. Didn't get many. Get it inside. Smith leaning in. Comes up short on the banker. 21-19 UCLA. Parsons on a bounce. Macklin again. Same move. And the sweep across the lane goes down. Keep going to it. I'm sure Florida and Billy Donovan will try to get that ball back to the post again. Success. You got to make UCLA make a change down there. Florida is 8 of 12 from the field. That's 67%. Lee looks down low. Tyus came out defensively. A oh, pretty move. And it's Lee knocking it down off the ankle breaker. Did that come from between his legs, reverse between his legs just then? Uh, my eyesight is not that good, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I just know it was an nice excellent move. move. <laughs> 23-21. Walker, pump fake. He got Anderson up in the air and drains it for three. Not only does the ball fake free the defender, right? The defender's now out of the play because you faked him out of the gym. It allows you that one bounce, and as a shooter, if you get the one bounce, it adds up to rhythm and usually adds up to success with your Jays. 24-23 Florida. Nelson the jumper. And it's rebounded by the smallest man on the floor, Walker. Gets it ahead. Gordon pull up. Can't hit the three. 
And Nelson there for the board for UCLA. Right on line, that shot. We were looking right over his right shoulder at just a split second quicker and higher in the shot. And he would have had that going down, getting these fans involved. Florida shot 55% from the field in the win over UC Santa Barbara. Back in, leaning through, and Smith draws the foul on Macklin. And the Florida fans react here in Tampa. Second personal on the Florida big man. Well, you see Macklin getting the moving down deep. And then there's that one ball faking. Nothing but net. Florida leading UCLA 24 to 23. Both teams shooting it well with Florida 9 of 14 from the field and Irving Walker 8 points including a couple of deep ones so far. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarkle, David Aldridge with us as well. Florida and UCLA, there's a little bit of history, sure. but normally these two teams play once they get deeper into the tournament. Absolutely, so it's interesting to see them this early, but really with one of the things I think with UCLA, they're willing to go up and down in their transition game with Florida. The key thing for them, though, is it gets up and down the floor. They want to make sure that they're back quickly enough to pick up the guards and Ben Howland talked about it. We'll look for a little opportunities to run our game plan, push it up the floor, but we better find the guards quickly in transition or we'll have some problems on our hands. Ben Howland saying that, hey, we're a great TV team. Great for ratings. Everybody is involved right to the end because we never do it the easy way. And that was never more evident in the second round matchup against Michigan State. They were in complete control and then nearly an epic collapse. They held on, 78-76. Yeah, when you tried to leave at the three-minute mark, I had to pull you back, remember? You, you thought that was wrong. <laughs> Here's Parsons lining it up. Can't hit the three, rebounded by Nelson. Simple with honey cut on him, though. Stay close to the shooters, get a hand up. It's nothing fancy, but it's fundamentally sound. 24-23, Florida. We will hit the seven-minute mark of this first half. Honeycutt has some size on Boynton. Honeycutt, the back in, almost lost it, regathers with 14 to shoot. 10 on the timer. High screen. Anderson using it. Give up. Whoa! Oh, the block by Young! Gorgeous rejection as Nelson didn't see it coming. And a foul call. Boy, I'm not so sure anybody saw this coming along the baseline. Because along the baseline, occasionally you get covered in traffic. What a reaction by Young. A step across, and he gets away from the body. Notice that separation. Watch the separation. He clears the body, keeps the hand up high. A terrific defensive effort by Young. Patrick Young, McDonald's All-American, as was Joshua Smith. They know one another from that experience. 24-23, Florida. Wilbekin for Young. Young with a good move. He just couldn't finish it. Nelson topples over. And now UCLA working four on five. Anderson will wait for Nelson to come down. And a good decision by Ben Howland. Oh, look at this now. Watch out. Patrick Young. Woof. The slimmer. Oh, boy, is he ever pumped. And defensively, gets the Florida fans going. A 9-2 run for the Gators. You know, with that said, you look at the scoreboard, you'd think the Gators would be up about 9 or 10. They're only up 3 after all of that. On the perimeter, Anderson swings it. Lee, that whole area was open, and Lee attacked. Able to draw the foul on Young, who rotated over. You take a look at the passing lane. A bounce pass, and Young goes after it. Stover did not. Ooh, man, nice finish. You know he's getting up off the ground because he can fly with strength also. Malcolm Lee, first team all Pac-10 this season, 79% shooter. Out of John W. North High School. Anderson will sit down. Anderson, an Anaheim native. One of the best defensive jobs I've seen in a long time against Lucas with Michigan State by Lee. Now Ben Howland said he believes Malcolm Lee is the best defensive player at his position in the country. 
I had no argument whatsoever with the coach on that one. 26-25, Florida. The back in, and Tyus got a good look. Working against Reeves Nelson. Second field goal for the junior from St. Louis, Missouri. A little slip cut along the baseline for him. Position, that's the second time he's had good position on the blocks. There's Jones circling. Nelson. And Parsons has got his hand on it. Knocked out of bounds. UCLA will hold on to it. Every tournament game is live online on your iPhone or iPad. NCAA March Madness On Demand. For details, go to mmod.ncaa.com. 28-25, Florida leading UCLA. The 2-7 matchup in the Southeast region. This is third round action. Winner will move on to New Orleans in the Sweet 16. Pretty moves, and Honeycutt threw it up near the rim. 28-25, Walker. Oh, Stover just rejected it. <laughs> Honeycutt the drive, and the foul called. Stover didn't even have to extend his arm. <laughs> that was a SWAT team. Oh, look at this. The little guy thinks he's getting by with this. I don't think so. <laughs> Not so much. Wow. Anthony Stover is the only player in the country with more than 20 blocks but less than 20 points this season. Different look at the offensive end with Stover on the floor for UCLA versus Smith. He only scores one point a game, Stover, but we just saw why he plays a lot defensively. Very quick and gets off the floor and has terrific timing. And Honeycutt will get another free throw. Trying to cut it to a one-point game. 4.41 left in this first half. Honeycutt a 73% shooter. Seven points in this opening half for Honeycutt. 28-27, Gators. Boynton. 17-year-old Scotty Wilbekin, the youngest player in the NCAA tournament. Inside, Young gets a touch. They try to do too much. Young shuffled the feet and unable to finish. Lee with a head of steam gives it up. We come up on four minutes left, first half. Lane sets the screen. Jones, good throw by Jones to get to the hoop. And the finish easier for him after that first dribble through the lane again because he went left to right to space a little bit for himself. He also, great work off the dribble. Boyden swings it for Walker, and UCLA up one. Deep three, it's short from Walker. Pull up, lead. And it's rebounded by Pius for Florida. We'll get a timeout. Not surprised that Billy Donovan's calling timeout after that last shot coming down the floor. Quick and long and not productive. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by the Chevrolet Volt. Applebee's. And by AT&T. McGarrett faces his nemesis on a new Hawaii 5-0. That's Monday only. CBS. 337 to play in this first half. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarco, David Aldridge, our producer Bob Monsbach, director Chris Svensson, the rest of our fantastic crew here in Tampa. With UCLA in front, 29 to 28. Three and a half to play in this first half. Wilbekin for Parsons, defended by Honeycutt. Get it inside. Young establishes, and Young goes with a left hand over Stover. Nice call by Billy Donovan off after the break on because he did not like the Walker long shot. So what do you do? You reload, change gears, and get a guy, Young, who's playing very confident, confidently right now. Get him involved again with a post-up move. And our eighth lead change in this first half. Florida up by one. Honeycutt, the leader. Tyus with the board. Get it ahead for Parsons. 
Wilbekin swings it. Corner. Fortin. Bottom on a three. Gator ball right there. Get it up and down. Find the shooters. Spot up. Everything perfect on that run. That's why Ben Howell wants to talk things over. Does not like what he sees there from a transition defensive standpoint. There's the post up for Young down deep. Nice delivery. Good finish. And look at the shooters. They know where to spot up, and they know how to let it low, go and reload it and knock them down. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Louisville head coach Rick Pitino joins the New York studio crew as a special guest. You'll get the latest tournament news and a Naismith watch presented by AT&T. That's coming up. AT&T at the half. Joshua Smith yep. on the UCLA bench. Smith with the two fouls. Zion, that's why they're going to just sit him there, I would think, for the rest of this half. Six points, four rebounds on three of five from the field. And that makes sense, too, because you're going to need that extra foul. You don't want him picking up a third in this first half. And then what generally happens, you know, you make a mistake and you pick up the second one in the beginning of the second half and you're totally out of the game mentally. Lane elected not to take the jump shot down to 2.18 to play in this first half. Ten to shoot. Lee <laughs> exploding to the rim. Wow, was that ever quick. He, once he got over that high screen and recognized there was a big guard in him. Smart play by Lee just to understand who you can go by and who you can't go by. Florida leads by two. Borton using the screen set by Young. He wants the post up one-on-one -on -one with Nelson. Bumping bodies. Knocked upstairs, and Nelson has got it for UCLA. The beauty of Nelson's game is Young gave him a pretty good belt to the chest right there, and Nelson didn't budge one, one bit. UCLA looking for the tie, or they can take the lead depending on their shot selection. Honeycutt defended by Parsons. Lee. Whoa. And yeah, that was just offline. He was trying to get it to Anderson out on the wing. Fifth UCLA turnover. And a timeout with a minute 30 to play. Malcolm Lee, the offensive repertoire, has been on display. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. We have a minute 30 to play in this first half. How close has it been? Four ties, eight lead changes. The largest lead on either end has been just four. Well, both teams came out in the comfort level, which was good to see. You know, really no jitters to start this game, and both of them were shooting very, very well early on, right around 60% for both of them early in this game. Murphy rolling to the rim, tough. Murphy getting it to go on the inside. He's only a sophomore. You know what Billy Donovan is building down in Gainesville. And the trend line after timeouts, pretty interesting that both times have gone to the blocks in the middle of the floor. 35-31, UCLA has yet to produce a point off its bench. Honeycutt, spread the floor, under a minute left. Honeycutt using the screen, the pull-up pop, no. Stover came in, and Stover with the follow and the foul. Not known for his offense, but did he ever release after the high screen was set for the jumper? Found a terrific spot on the floor and went right after it with the delivery. He had 19 points on the season coming into this game. He now has 21 and he can make it 22. Wilbekin calls for the foul. Stover, 5 of 14 from the line. In his freshman year out of Pasadena, California. Missed it. Nelson offensive rebound. And UCLA down by two with the ball and a 12-second difference. Shot clock to game clock. Boy, is that ever a bonus, huh? Get Stover to knock one back, and then you get the ball again on the missed free throw. Lee looking for it. 16 to shoot. Down to 25 seconds to play in the first half. High screen, Lee off the stutter step. Anderson, shot clock down to six. Baseline, hit Stover. Again. And he's going to the free throw line again. So Anthony Stover has been a factor. Tyus called on the foul. Stops the clock with 17.2 left. Smith on the bench, and Stover's given them a little action. It'll be interesting to see him shoot the free throws right now. And I'm not sure he had the real good body language going to the free throw line. Redshirt freshman. Yep. 
Now five of 16 on the season. Smith did his damage early, picked up the second foul, and Ben Howland planted him right on the bench. And that's why it turns out to be a pretty good foul. Fouling Stover, we'll see what happens right here. It's another hard one. Wow, they're going to keep the ball, I believe. Yep, yep. Last touch by Murphy as Lane continued to battle off the miss. And not to make fun of Stover's free throws, I am, but they're, they're off so badly that they're not really easy balls to retrieve off the glass. Well, Smith laughing a little bit at, at the free throws. This is a loose UCLA group. <laughs> you have to be loose. You know, it's focused and loose. Good combination. And they'll get the last shot here. Smith is 0 of 2 from the line, by the way, today. Just to finish off the story. <laughs> okay. We don't know if he was laughing at the free throws or not. Anderson, five seconds left. Anderson on a crossover. Anderson trying to create. Nope. And that's the end of the first half. Florida 35, UCLA 33. The Gators shoot 56% from the field, but they lead by just two. The Bruins, 42%, including one of five from three-point territory. As we send it over to David Aldridge. Coach, 56% shooting, but only up by two. Why is this such a tight game? Well, I think they've done a great job on the glass. They've limited our offensive rebounds. And I think the other thing, too, is we fouled too much. We put them to the free throw line way, way too much. Uh, Vernon Macklin's got two. Scotty Wilbekin's got two. Eric Murphy. So, uh, you know, we're fortunate, to be honest with you, to be where we're at right now, but we're going to have to defend and rebound better than we did in the first half. Coach, thanks. Thank you. All right, back to you, Ian. DA, UCLA out rebounding Florida 20 to 10 in that first half. Gators up by two. We're at the break. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Miller Lite, HP, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and by LG. Halftime, 35-33, the number two seed in the Southeast, Florida leading UCLA. Ben Howland, UCLA head coach, David Aldridge caught up with him. Coach, they obviously shot 56%, but you had the board advantage. Did you like the pace of the game in the first half? Yeah, the pace was fine. We've got to do a better job defensively. They're big guys inside at seven baskets. So you have to give them credit. They're playing well. We've got to execute better offensively. And... Uh, Try to push it a little bit harder. Ideally, how would you like to split the minutes between Smith and Stover in the second half? Uh, I want Smith to be able to play 15 minutes this half. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. All right. All right, T.A., thank you. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. Okay, they talked about the pace. Yep. Uh, I think both of us are in the same boat. Still trying to figure out exactly what UCLA is right now, what kind of team and what kind of style they want to play. I agree, and I think one of the things is, and uh, David, that was a great question about Smith. How much time does he want him on the floor? And emphatically, Ben Howland's answer, 15 minutes of the 20. That's what they want to do. They want to try to position themselves on the offensive glass to contend with Florida's uh, play down deep. You take a look at these numbers, 56% shooting by Florida, but as he mentioned a second ago, 20 to 10 on the rebounding. Big advantage for UCLA. This game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Second half underway here in Tampa, UCLA and Florida. The winner here will advance to New Orleans, take on the survivor of BYU, Gonzaga. That'll be later tonight from Denver. This says everything pointed to a great second half, doesn't it? Just the way they kind of threw punches at one another in the first half and nobody bought. Nice look for Smith. And Honeycutt able to get it to Smith down low for the easy bucket. They're going to try to keep him involved. And it'll be interesting just to see which five minutes Ben Howland decides to get him off the floor. Eight points, four rebounds for Joshua Smith. The freshman from Kent, Washington. We are tied at 35. High screen. Walker trying to work around Jones. A foul called. And that's going to be number three on the UCLA point guard. 
One of the best things you can do as a guard is to put the ball on the floor to keep pressure on the defensive guy. So many times, Ryan, we hear that phrase, keep pressure on people, and most people think it's just defensively putting the pressure on the ball, but you can reverse that, use the ball to put pressure on the defenders, and it was well done to start there in that set. Jeremy Anderson in for Jones. Eight freshmen and sophomores on this UCLA roster, no seniors. Boynton swings it, Walker, get it inside, Macklin. Turning on Smith, Macklin gets around him and lays it in. And Macklin has to go a long way to get that shot. He comes up lumbering a little bit, maybe a little body bounce to that thigh that he has a pad on underneath on the left side. Florida leads by two. Lee. Off the drive, turnaround short. And Parsons there for the rebound. Six points, three assists for Parsons. Macklin using the window. And a good setup by Borton. What did Ben Howland just tell David at Aldridge just then? We can't let the big guys get the buckets down deep. Well, Billy Donovan sure does want to duplicate what he got in that first half out of his Gator big front line. Florida with a four-point lead. Just underway in the second half. Anderson for Honeycutt. Boyden able to recover defensively. Yep. Nine to shoot. Good no shot there by Honeycutt. Nelson, the drive. Floater goes down. And it's Reeves Nelson using the glass, his 10th point of the day. He always has the ability to get that shot off at 235 pounds. It's tight, it's strong. And a terrific move just then. Nice hands. Good job by Honeycutt. Look up the floor. You got one. Moves it ahead for Lee. Who lays it in? Good look by Honeycutt just then. He was so focused on trying to come up with that ball. I didn't think he recognized that Lee got out to half court in a hurry. First guy to half court generally gets the layup. Sixth tie here today. Parsons comes up short on the runner. Macklin swings it. Tyus thought that Macklin was going to shoot it. And a miscommunication on the inside. Fifth turnover for Florida. You take a look down deep. Here's the work. Now watch up here at the top. There's the skip out. He anticipates that Honeycutt's going to come up with the steal, and he runs out to get a bucket. Smart play by Lee to cheat and get down the floor. And a timeout with 17-15 to play in this second half. We are all knotted up at 39. time meeting between Florida and UCLA tied at 39 early in this second half we check out the tournament summary John Calipari advancing to the Sweet 16 with his Kentucky Wildcats sixth consecutive year obviously connecting that with his days in Memphis VCU the only first four team to move on into the round of 32 and Michigan how about this one Jimmy that's that is the best one so far in terms of stats they win an NCAA tournament game. First time it's ever happened without converting on a free throw. One free throw attempt. And you know what is really remarkable there is they scored 75 points. Now if it was a, you know, 50-ish, 50 to 48 score or something, but to go that high without scoring a free throw is mind-boggling to me. So John Beeline and the Wolverines move on here in the 2011 NCAA tournament. One of these two teams will be in the Sweet 16. UCLA trying to regain the lead. Honeycutt. Highest good defense. Almost got knocked home by Florida. Good luck up the floor. Boyden using the screen. Slapped out of there. Tyus gets it for Walker. Forced to give it up. Wanted to take that pull-up jumper, but UCLA able to close defensively. Macklin a spin. Left hand. It's good and a foul. Vernon Macklin wheeling on the inside and a chance for three. Because of the size and mobility of Smith, watch how far Macklin has to go to get his shot off. He goes middle and then look how far away he has to go and he's effectively picked up the third foul on Smith because what is he getting him to do? He's getting the big guy to move his feet back and forth defensively. When you get a big guy moving from side to side like that, it is a great time to do two things. Number one is to attack and number two Two is to get a foul on him. They had a foul called against Tyus off the rebound action. Smith, three personals. Ben Howland will summon him over to the UCLA bench. 
And he's replaced by Anthony Stover. Remember his comments at the half, right? He wants to get him on the floor, keep him on the floor for 15 minutes if he can. He's been only to buy three and a half minutes. Now he wasn't factoring in foul trouble when he made that comment. Pressure on Lee. Gets it ahead for Anderson. Should have some numbers if they hurry. Nope. Good work there of getting back transition defense by the Gators. Whoa. <laughs> Nelson the drive. Just so fundamentally sound. Reeves Nelson knows exactly what he wants to do when he gets the ball. I think UCLA avoided a turnover just then out front. Nelson with 12 points. He's the only player in double figures. Get it to the blocks. Let's see what Stover does defensively. He goes down. Yep. Nice. Work. And he draws the charge. Yeah, that's good work defensively. He's been a factor in the first half and stepping in right now. Third personal on the big man, Vernon Macklin, in a timeout with 15.54 to go, second half. LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell star in a new NCIS Los Angeles Tuesday, only CBS. Game trends, seven ties, eight lead changes. Largest lead has been four for both teams. Well, Rick Pitino doing a great job back in the studio. I know he'd rather be coaching right now. Louisville falling to Moorhead State. His son, Richard Pitino, an assistant on Billy Donovan's staff. Billy, of course, played for Rick at Providence and then was an assistant under Rick before taking the head coaching job at Marshall, eventually moving on to Florida. And I thought Rick did a, a terrific job this year with Louisville Iron because he had injuries. Could have been playing a medical doctor all season long with the way his team was up and down with their injuries. Finished 12 and 6 and third in the Big East. Entry feed. Nelson establishing. And a foul call. Reeves Nelson will head to the free throw line after the foul on Young. I think you want to see a guy come down the middle of the floor, but watch him use his body on occasion. See, that's the first thing he learns to do. It's a terrific skill to be able to use your body as you're in the offensive mode, looking to get shots off, not only to get to the free throw line, we've seen him use the body to convert buckets also this afternoon. Improved numbers from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Just about at his season average right now. Averages just under 14 points per game, nine boards. And he knocks down a pair of the free throw line, 43 to 41. He is six of six. 14 points, seven rebounds for the sophomore. Two-point lead for UCLA. Borton draws the defense. Young, the discard of Nelson. Kick out. Borton, the three. Knocked up. Parsons is there. Oh, oh, oh. And the tip in goes. Tyus got his hand on it. I thought for Florida. Oh, and he just waited long enough for that ball to clear the front of the rim. And it will be Tyus with his sixth point of the afternoon. Anderson feeding. Lee. Nice attack by Lee going to the hole. Pace picking up. You're just kind of feeling out who's going to make this 8-2 to two run type of game right here in the second half. Both teams answering when they need to, though. Off the screen set by Young. Tyus. Hold the string. And Young is there for the throwdown. Good minutes off the bench for Billy Donovan. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, I guess, but you know what? He got, he was in the right spot and he finished. Young might be both. Mm, good point. Six points now for Young. We are tied at 45. Anderson, now Nelson. Good wow. fake, missed it. And Tyus there for the defensive rebound. Get it up the floor in a hurry. Parsons! Oh, honey cut with the block! Oh, honey cut! Little sweet defense right there, Ian, because transition defense, which Ben Howland wanted his squad to do, that just that first guy in allowed Honeycutt to get back because Parsons couldn't get his legs underneath him because he had to reach for the basketball. The leading shot blocker in the Pac-10. They just showed the replay. And you may have heard the reaction from the crowd here. I have to admit, when I saw him play and watching him play in person, it's 6'8", you say, how can he lead the Pac-10 in block shots? But he does because he's got uncanny timing. Lee, floater doesn't go. Parsons gets it ahead for Borton. The spin. And there's the foul on Anderson. Wow. 
Tied at 45, 13 49 to play in this second half. His first 13 foul. Kenny Boynton at the line. Kenny Boynton at the free throw line, 82%. Anderson is first free throw. Uh, should say first foul on Anderson. The CEO of the MGM Grand goes undercover in Las Vegas, an all-new undercover boss. That's tomorrow, only CBS. And Borton puts Florida in front by two. Rector back in, and he replaces the SEC Player of the Year, Chandler Parsons. Small lineup out there for Florida right now. With Boynton slide into the small forward position. And Howland will make a change. Anderson sits. He's... Replaced by Lazaric Jones. It'll be important to see if Smith for UCLA can avoid that next foul. Florida shooting it at 54%, UCLA at 44%. And the Gators up by two. That's why when he's out there with the three fouls, they, they should get him. Here we go, get him his touches. Smith powers his way. Foul called. So you don't know how long Smith is going to be able to avoid the fourth foul. So while he's out there, Get him the ball and make sure you take advantage of minutes that you have him on the floor offensively. Meanwhile, they draw the third personal on Patrick right. Young. And clearly that's not to just assume that Smith will get a fourth. The chances are the way he plays and how he mixes it up, it's going to come sooner or later. Smith, 62% shooter. Well, he definitely needs his touches, that's for sure. And it opens up the driving game. If he's effective there and then they slide a double team down to him, because he's effective offensively, and then those slashers out in the court, like a Lee and a Honeycutt, can get to their spots a little easier. UCLA has 11 more free throw attempts than Florida. Lane violation, and it was Walker who jumped in. Florida is going with a three-guard set. Wilbekin, Walker, and Boynton. They have Will Yeget, who's a swingman at six foot seven, and then Patrick Young in the middle for the tie. Mm, he can't it. In this type of game, remember that play right there. It's one point. We'll mark it down at 13:30. Violation. Who knows? With the way this is shaping up, you may just have a one-pointer. So 19 attempts for UCLA at the line. Eight for Florida. And with the defensive substitution just then smart because the big fella's breathing hard over there. You don't want him to be tired and pick up that fourth foul. Nice substitution by Ben Howland. Stover and Nelson back in for the Bruins. Outside for Yeget. Wilbekin makes his move. And the block by Honeycutt. That's why he leads the Pac-10. Lee on a bounce ahead for Honeycutt. To the blocks. Nelson. Tried to get it to Stover, instead it's a turnover. Walker sprinting towards the rim. It's good, and one. Irving Walker, the speedster. Jones is pleading his case, and somebody better get him away from the official because he's pleading a little too much. How does this shot make it to the rim? I'm not so sure. Just flat out concentration after the speed move coming down the middle of the floor. Irving Walker with 10 points. Fourth personal foul against Lazaric Jones. And now Smith and Anderson will check back in for UCLA. We have 12.55 remaining in this second half. Florida up by two. It was another nice block, too, wasn't it, by Honeycutt? Well, not the last trip, obviously, but the trip down before. He's an impact player in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Averaging two blocks per game. He's got two here today. Three-point lead for the Gators. Somebody's got to help out. Loop it in for Anderson. Watch the screen with uh, Honeycutt. That's smart to sit back there to try to get a screen to free up some room for Anderson to dribble the ball up the floor, even though he went the other way. Anderson is a junior. He's a combo guard. He's become a backup at yeah. point guard, and Nelson turns it over for UCLA. Nelson doesn't agree, but he lifted. He just jumped into his move just then. Seventh turnover for the Bruins. Big possession right here for offensive momentum for Florida. If they can keep the pressure on, let's see what UCLA does at the defensive end. Five on the floor for Florida. Walker, Wilbekin, Young, Tyus, and Parsons. Walker comes to the top. Walker a three. In and out. Tyus got his hands on it, secures it. 
And rebounded by Anderson on the weak side. Honeycutt knew exactly where to be on that shot attempt. I don't know if he got a piece of it or not, but he was a factor. UCLA down three. Honeycutt has got the height advantage on Walker. Help from Parsons. Anderson is open. Gives it up. Extra feed. Lines it up. Lee can't hit the three. Rebound it. Smith, he lays it in. How about both sides of the floor just then? You want to make the Gators play some defense? Stay on the left side for a split second. Bring it to the top. Bring it to the right. And what does the big fella do? He anticipates a miss by going to the opposite side of the floor to get himself an offensive rebound. 12 points now for Smith. Five rebounds. This is a one-point game. Parsons, the curl and bounce. Oh! That's a man's jam! It's Patrick Young! Boy, did they ever release the basketball at the right time, and Young has given Billy Donovan just terrific effort and minutes off his bench this afternoon. 52-49, Smith answers on the other end. Smart by UCLA again. Take advantage of Smith while he's on the floor. Oh, this is a terrific basketball game right now. You want some action? Here we go. Wham! Oh. April 7th through the 10th, CBS Sports again proudly presents a tradition unlike any other, the Masters from historic Augusta National right here on CBS. 11.15 to play. We're in the second half. Florida 52, UCLA 51. This is the 2-7 matchup in the Southeast region. Winner moves on to New Orleans. Florida at 27-7 this season, SEC regular season champions. UCLA 23-10. They went 13-5 in the Pac-10. Suffered through a four-game losing streak in November and December. Off the timeout, Tyus there to clean up the Parsons miss. I think that was a set that Parsons was going to catch it and go with it and try to just force the action along the baseline. The Gators recognized the play and followed him up perfectly as they shift back to a 2-3 look right now. Not a bad move by Billy Donovan to switch things up. Those four losses for UCLA, Villanova, VCU, Kansas, three tournament teams, and Montana. And that's where people in Westwood started questioning whether or not this team had the right stuff. Lee, a three. Nelson. Oh, he couldn't put it in. Out of bounds. And fortunate for UCLA that they'll retain it. I am sure that Nelson thought that he was going to be contested on that one. And if he had to do it 100 more times, 99 times out of 100, he'd be able to put that down. Florida up by three with 10.22 left in Tampa. Here, third round action in the Southeast region with Florida and UCLA. Richmond, two good back-to-back -back seasons. 51 games they've won over a two-year period of time. Gators up by three. We approach the halfway point of this second half. Earlier today, Kentucky got the win over West Virginia to advance to the Sweet 16 in the East region. They'll play in Newark. 15 to shoot. 2 3 defense right now. The bigs are across the back are very tall for Florida. Lee, kick out. Honeycutt, shot clock at seven. In a crowd, Honeycutt with four. Nice luck. <laughs> and it's Lee maneuvering on the inside. How did he find them. Boy, that was a terrific look by Honeycutt just then. Winner here will meet the winner of Gonzaga BYU. That's tonight on CBS from Denver. Parsons. And a blocking foul. Chandler uh, Parsons forcing the issue. And it is Smith, number four, on the UCLA big man. Exactly what Ben Howlin didn't need. Exactly, and, and Parsons, to give him his credit, a lot of traffic in there, but I think Parsons knew the situation and knew how important it was to get Smith out of this game with the foul, the fourth one. And I think he just overemphasized the drive to the basket to say, you know what, I'm going to take a shot here. If I pick up a charge, so be it. But if, I, if it works, because I don't have any fouls, right? If I'm Parsons' thought process, I have no fouls. If I get one right now and take a chance and run the big guy over, but maybe I'll get him moving. 
It's been quiet for Parsons, yet he's filling up the stat sheet. Yeah. Now Smith will sit down after the first free throw, replaced by Reeves Nelson. For Florida, number four, Patrick Young. 55-53, Florida. Parsons, a 56% shooter. And missed it on the second attempt. We are down to 9.22 to play. Two-point lead for the Gators. Good post up here. The entry, Nelson Molina. And another foul called against Florida. The understanding of how to use that body in the post, Nelson has done it very, very well. And that's number four on Patrick Young. Reeves Nelson is six of six from the free throw line. And now Billy Donovan is going to send Vernon Macklin back on the floor. Short. Macklin replacing Young with 9.16 remaining on the clock. Missed them both. Macklin the board. Yeah, unfortunate for Nelson, though. He's had an impact on this game. 55-53, Gators. UCLA now 14 of 21 of the free throw line. Ten more attempts. Tyus squares. Nelson got his hand on it, able to guide it towards Lee. Pushing it up the floor, picked up by Borton. Anderson gets instructions from Howland. As Eric Jones is on the bench, the starting point guard for UCLA with four fouls. Every so often, you, go, you can go over the top of that 2-3 zone if they slide too far up. Watch for Nelson on the baseline block. There Anderson. Good feed. Tyus the block on Nelson. He got gummed on the inside. He was open a second before that iron. Just a touch later, he would have had two. Florida up by two. We approach eight minutes to play in this second half. Horton off the dribble drive. Oh! Trying to slam it down. Macklin. They've got numbers. Honeycutt. Stutter step. Missed it. Oh. And a foul called. Anderson telling Honeycutt, you got to jam that ball. But Honeycutt had already taken off. Plus, plus he faked on it, too. So watch the fake, and he doesn't get elevation as much. Right? You see that right there? The fake throws your timing off a little bit and didn't allow him to get right where he wanted to on the rim. And look at that. Oh, just rolling off for him. Been a few of those for UCLA today. Yeah. And now Smith will come back on for the Bruins at the 8.04 mark, as will Lazarek Jones. Boy, is that a big, big decision, right? Meanwhile, the fourth foul on Macklin. How about this one? The Florida Gators are the only team in the country not to have a player foul out of a game this season. And right now, they're two big men, Macklin and Young, each have four personal fouls. So Eric Murphy will come on. He replaces Tyus. Fifty-five, fifty-three. Florida. Eight minutes to play. Jones with four fouls. Smith with four for UCLA. Florida in his own. Get it in for Smith. Turns. Whoa. Gives it up. He was trying to find Lane, and it's saved by Florida, but out of bounds. Walker. So UCLA will retain it when we come back. Take a deep breath. <laughs> 7.47 to play. Billy Donovan and the Florida Gators up by two on UCLA. Winner goes to the Sweet 16. Game summary, Florida in front, 55 to 53. They've maintained a high shooting percentage throughout. 12-2 off the bench in favor of the Gators as well. Courtside, Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. David Aldridge joining us along the sidelines. Well, here we are with 7.47 to go. A close one in Tampa. We've had good games throughout here at this site. What's been the key in your mind leading up to this point? Well, I think the points in the paint, we just touched on it a second ago from a statistical standpoint. 
when you look at it, one of the things UCLA has to continue to do is try to get the ball down on the blocks, especially when they have Smith on the floor like they do right now. So they have to take advantage of that. And at the defensive end, he's got to be so careful because if you're Florida thinking right now, one or two of these guys have to start taking a chance and throwing your body at him when you get the ball. Foul trouble for both teams. The difference, UCLA is playing two of their players in foul trouble, Jones and Smith. Florida's players in foul trouble are on the bench. Young and Macklin. Jones feeding inside. Nelson surrounded, squeezed it up. And he's going to the free throw line. And let's check in with David Aldridge. Well, you might have seen uh, Nelson go to the bench there for a couple minutes, just had a bloody nose. They stuffed some cotton in there. He's back on the court and at the line iron. Well, he's a tough guy, Reeves Nelson, the sophomore. On that play, Lazaric Jones, who has had thumb trouble and wrist issues on his left hand, was in some major pain. He walked away and started biting his jersey. And Stover will check in, replacing Smith. Offense, defense, substitution. And the smart way to go, plus the fact that Stover is an excellent defender to boot. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, I mean, I've, I've mentioned it a second ago, but you have to think when he comes back in. Now, if they can get him through this whole game without fouling out, that's a tremendous uplift for UCLA. Tied at 55. We come up on seven minutes to play. Here's Ty, a spin to the rim. Doesn't go. Rebounded by Nelson there's for the Bruins. There's your defensive factor right there, Ian, and the ability to move his feet quickly, Stover. And it wasn't right on top of the play, but it gets the shooter thinking that this guy's coming, he's tracking me, he may get a piece of it, and what happens is you miss your shot because your concentration breaks just for a second. Lee back outside for Jones. Swing it. Out on the perimeter for Honeycutt. And Ben Howland didn't like what he saw. 14 to shoot, 6.43 to play. Once they get somebody in the middle of that zone. And tonight, third round coverage of the NCAA tournament continues. Over on CBS, Moorhead State and Richmond. Out of the Southwest region, West region on TNT. Temple versus San Diego State. And in the Southeast region, TBS has your coverage of Butler and Pittsburgh. Get the remote, remote control ready. You pick the game. The NCAA tournament, March Madness, oh. well covered. Smith, oh. oh, it was Parsons coming back to make a play defensively. Boynton the three, bottom. What a turn of events. Terrific defensive effort there because they went over the top on the zone, the 2 3 zone. Well designed by Ben Howlin, but boy, was that a terrific defensive play to save two down one end, and you come right back down and make things happen. And by the way, the fans have re entered this game. 12 points for Boynton. Smith, the spin, forces his way in, goes down, and could not finish around the basket. He just never got the left foot down in time to really plan to be strong going to the hoop. Walker. Got to move and you got to be careful, big guy, if you're moving with the little Murphy. Bucket for three. Timeout UCLA. Largest lead of the game. And it's Florida in front, 61 to 55. Smith is pointing, he gets it. And what happens? Not only do they get the block, a sensational block, but they keep it in play. And Murphy, who came up big with a couple of these the first round, knocks one back for the Gators. UCLA now trailing 61 to 55 game reset the Bruins have just one timeout remaining five team fouls and the possession arrow does belong currently to Florida six point lead for the Gators Gainesville is 130 miles north of Tampa just take I-75 and the fans have shown up here in Tampa they went over the top the one time to Smith. Let's see if they can get somebody into the middle of the floor on occasion with the flash. Out of the timeout. Honeycutt. Parsons there defensively. 12 seconds left to shoot. 5.20 to play. Have to go by somebody on the perimeter. Jones for Lee. There you go. Long strides on the hard drive. And a foul call. 
Sometimes they can make it look so easy, but there's a hesitation because the pressure of making sure that you make the right decision, and Lee sure did. And that's the fourth foul on Murphy. So Florida with three players with four personal fouls. And Malcolm Lee at the line, a 79% shooter. One and one, and he missed it, the front end. Rebounded by Parsons. On the outside, pull up pop, Boynton rims out. And the rebound to Nelson for UCLA. This is a six point game with under five minutes left. Pull up, pop for three, Honeycutt, he drains it. Terrific look too by Jones, the simple stuff, get up and down the floor. And Billy Donovan wants to talk things over now. Clock is stopped with 4.45 remaining. And Florida up by three. A little diagonal. And the shooting continues. Billy Donovan's team with a 61 to 58 lead over UCLA. This Florida squad was a number two seed in the 2003 NCAA tournament right here in Tampa. Got upset. In fact, got blown out by Michigan State in the second round. They're a two seed here taking on the seventh seeded Bruins. And I'm a little surprised with the defense and offense substitutions that Smith is on the floor right now and not Stover. Macklin back out there. Fulton lines up a three. Goes down. No foul called. Long rebound for Smith. Now it's Honeycutt in the open floor. Honeycutt pulls up. Back of the iron. No. Tyus knocked it upstairs. Parsons couldn't grab it. And it's out of bounds. And Boynton is down. And I think Smith was involved with that play, Ian. And it was very close that the big guy came out, and shockingly to me, that Smith came out and challenged on the perimeter with four fouls. I mean, that's the last thing they, they needed to have happen, and we'll see what happens with Boynton here. Probably an ankle is my guess. He goes up for the shot, the big guy's out there, and does he land on the Smith's foot? That was my guess right there. Let's see if he comes down on a foot. Yep. So Boynton landing awkwardly. Yeah, I think it was the, let's see if they tend to the left foot. Another look at it. Now watch the big guy. The big guy releases, which you really don't want to have him do with four fouls. And you see that? Yeah, it was the left ankle. I don't know if you could see it there. A little bit of that roll. They will help Boynton up. He did not land on the foot of Smith. It was on his own landing as the left foot yeah, buckled. But Smith was in the area. Right. And you know, it's a funny thing from playing sports and basketball. You roll your ankle a lot as a basketball player, and it's good to see him up. It'll be interesting to see how much pressure. Not bad. It's almost the comparison is with your ankle. It's kind of like an elastic band when you stretch it, and it comes back to normal form. Because you roll your ankle as a player. He's probably rolled his ankle 500 times playing basketball. But sometimes when you land, the pressure just goes over on it. And it does hurt. And it's a, that's a stinger when you get it, believe me. So Boynton will sit down for Florida. And it's a, if it's not too bad, the good news is that's the type of injury you can retape. Get the train to tape, retape that ankle, and you can come back relatively quick as long as there's nothing really severely injured with it. UCLA with possession. We resume 4-18 to play in the second half. Florida up by three. Man-to-man -man defense right now. Let's see if we get a little slashing. Catch and fire. Honeycutt missed it. And Walker with the board for the Gators. And Macklin's pointing to bring it to the right side of the floor. Wilberton is in. Replacing oh, Gordon. a flat-out terrific move, and I think he bought one right there, Smith, because he had Smith right where he wanted. I thought there was some contact on that play, but no call. They play on, and the big fella stays on the floor. 63-58, to 58, Gators. Nice release pass there in the diagonal. And Lee. Whoa. Reverse. Beautiful release from the pivot by Smith down deep. 14 for Malcolm Lee. 
Back to a three-point game. 325 left. Smith has a great understanding of how to help defensively, but he's got to be careful right there. Walker, the pull-up. And he draws the foul. It gets Lee from behind. Take a look right now. Watch the big guy. He's going to slide over. Uh, I think there's some contact there. He's lucky. And the finish. And now the Coke Zero impressive moment. And it's Irving Walker. Well, he gets swallowed up initially right there. And then all of a sudden, he figures out a way to get the shot up over Smith. There was some contact on it. And now you see him, or now you don't, and now you do see him. What a move right there, though, in terms of getting the shot off. I mean, it's one thing to create the contact, but then to be able to get that shot up high off the glass, a terrific shot. And UCLA very fortunate that Smith did not get called on his fifth foul. Walker's free throw, no good. 78% from the line as we check in with David Aldridge. Well, you see Boynton back on the bench, Kenny Boynton back on the bench after spraining his left ankle and that collision, his return right now questionable for the rest of the game. You wonder if it swelled up on him a little bit while he was inside, but here he comes to the scorer's table. Right on cue, Kenny Boynton will return next break. Yeah, you'll know the, you'll know the first trip up the floor. Nice defensive effort here. And Jones turns it over. The double team came from Wilbekin and Walker. Jones needed help. He didn't get it. Nope. And that's a tough spot to stop because once you stop across half court, the enemy is two guys in white shirts and the back court line. You can't go anywhere. You've just basically boxed yourself in there with the sideline and the back court line. So it acts as two more defenders. So it's like a four on one against you. Florida with a four point lead. And Kenny Boynton has returned for the Gators. Walker, crossover, stutter step, gives it up, Macklin there, and he gets the layup to go. Oh, Walker is a magician. Yeah, he made a tough shot we just talked about, and that was beautiful penetration to set up a teammate. Six-point lead for the Gators, down to 235 remaining here in Tampa. Honeycutt a three, knocks it down. <laughs> oh, baby. He's only 4-12 from the floor, but he's hit two big ones down the stretch. 66-63, Florida. Honeycutt now with 13. Walker, the dish. Macklin lost it. Smith takes it away, and UCLA has it. Not only did Smith end up with the ball, but he actually got his hand out to deflect it early on in that sequence. Out on the perimeter, Jones playing with four personal fouls, as is Smith on the inside. They're going to post him up. There goes Honeycutt. you got to clear out of the way. Honeycutt. A three, rimming, no. Rebound, same team, and Nelson tracks it down for the Bruins. Nelson with another double-double, 16 points and 11 rebounds. Now, with them slowing it down just a second, it gives Smith a few seconds to catch his breath. Honey cut for Smith. Inside, yes. Good smarts, real good smarts. That delay gave him five seconds to catch his breath to be able to catch it and go with it. 16 now for Joshua Smith. This is a one-point game with 120 to go. Macklin attacking. No call. Bodies go down, and it's knocked out of bounds off of UCLA. How about Nelson coming across just then? Defensively, he gets you to worry. Look at Smith. The watch. He, he goes all the way down, gets right in where he knows he can just basically kiss it right off the glass, and then you have the defensive end down there where Nelson steps across. Wilbekin checks in for Kenny Boynton. So obviously some concern over that left ankle. Wilbur can try to get it in. He'll go deep. Whoa. Caught by Walker. Lee went for the steal. Walker. Oh, he's lethal. Walker a three. The little guy is playing so big right now, taking over this game offensively. He's in his own. 69-65, Gators. We have one minute to play. Jones on the perimeter. Nelson sets the screen. Honeycutt, 50 seconds left. Four-point lead for Florida. Shot clock is down to 12. There's the high screen. Jones makes his move. Kick out. Honeycutt offers it up a three. Rimming, no. And Tyus claims the loose ball for Florida. They got to go with the foul mode right now. And Lee went for the steal. He'll get called for the foul with 32.8 remaining.
Well, here's the steal attempt. Lee tries to get it, just misses with the deflection. And does Ever Walker take a look over his left shoulder first to make sure Lee isn't tracking him? Here's that drive again where Walker started the shows that he's put on, and he has just taken over from an offensive standpoint. 17 for the junior, Irving Walker. Timeout. And a timeout with 32.8 remaining. Free throws coming up for Florida. Gators up by four on UCLA. Game reset. Each team with one timeout remaining. You see the team fouls. Seven against UCLA. Eight against Florida. And the possession arrow belongs to the Gators. 69-65. Florida in front. The winner will advance to New Orleans and play the winner of the BYU-Gonzaga game. That's later tonight from Denver. Vern Lundquist, Bill Raftery, Leslie Visser will have the coverage there. 78% shooter. One and one for Irving Walker. UCLA, make sure you have to box out. The lead is five. Kenny Boynton with a sprained left ankle currently watching this one from the Florida bench. But his backcourt mate has picked up the slack. Has, and Wilberton has done a good job defensively, so I don't think you take a chance of putting him back out, especially with the lead. He knocks down a pair. Walker has 19. And UCLA is running out of time. 30 seconds left. Lee on a crossover. Stripped by Parsons and a foul call. 26.6 remaining on the clock. And the first foul today on Chandler Parsons. Lee will head to the strike. You're in no man's land there, whether you need that three, the quick three or not, but it wasn't there, so it was a good move by Lee to get himself going to the basket just as long as you stop the clock. 80% free throw shooter, so not a bad percentage move. If he makes these three throws, you're in decent shape in terms of coming down the stretch to play the foul, attack, you know, defensively, look for your, your quick steal, and then make Florida hit the free throws. 79% shooter. Six-point game. Lee missed it. Rebounded by Tyus. Lee trying to foul Walker. Wow. And now Jones is called for the foul. He's done. That's number five. Five precious seconds, too, right there. And this is a UCLA team that missed nine uh, yep, free throws in the final minute 31 of the game against Michigan State the other yeah, night. Absolutely. Tom Izzo did a nice job coming down the stretch, allowing his team to stick it out and have many opportunities down the stretch. Smith will come back in. And Walker will head back to the line. 18 fouls against UCLA. So one and one opportunity here for Walker. As a team, Florida's 11 of 15. They did not shoot free throws well, though, during the season. They finished ninth in the SEC as a team, 67%. Walker, it's good. Largest lead of the game. There's Mr. Donovan. Terrific man. I always get a chance to speak to him before the games, and he's fabulous. And Billy riding it well. He has, understands his littlest guy on the floor. Small by stature, but boy, has he put a, he put the Gators on his back in the last five minutes, didn't he, and carried them down the stretch. What a big effort from Irving Walker. 73 to 65, 17 seconds left. Anderson, outside, Nelson a three, rainbow delivery doesn't go. Rebounded by Young. Parsons will get it across. That'll do it. Florida is headed to the Big Easy. The Gators advance to the Sweet 16. 73 to 65. And a 7-0 run over the final minute 30 for Florida. They knock off UCLA and await the winner of BYU and Gonzaga. For Jim Spadarkle, David Aldrich, I'm Ian Eagle. Coming up next, Moorhead State Richmond. We'll send you to our New York studio.
After these messages, Florida moving on in the NCAAs.